What's up guys? So a few months back, I got an Asus ROG G550 laptop for gaming and editing on the go. And for the most part, it's sufficient for my needs. But one of its glaring drawbacks is that it only carries a single 750 gigabyte hard drive with no SSD. Almost immediately, it was evident that the G550 would leave me unsatisfied until it could offer me those faster boot and load times that I've been spoiled by for the last few years. So today I'll be migrating the operating system from my laptop's 7200 RPM hard drive over to this 480 gigabyte HyperX 3K SSD from Kingston. I'll also be walking you through all of the steps that I took to get there. Before we dive into it though, if you're gonna try this little transplant at home, do some quick research first and make sure that your model of laptop grants you access to the hard drive and that it uses a SATA interface compatible with an SSD. Because the last thing you want is to be midway through the process and realize you've been swap blocked by your laptop manufacturer. If all looks good and you've decided to move forward, the things you'll need are a laptop with a hard drive, preferably one that's slow and makes you mad, an SSD, for most cases I highly recommend 240 gigabytes and up, especially if this is going to be your only drive in the system, an external drive enclosure or a SATA to USB adapter, I'm using my awkwardly cumbersome adapter from Vantech, but I'll put some links in the description with some additional options, a disk cloning software, I'm using Acronis True Image HD which came with my SSD, but since the program doesn't let me record with OBS while it's running, for demonstration purposes I'll be using EaseUS to do backup free, a free to use software with possible possibly the worst name ever. If your SSD didn't come with a cloning software, there's a handful of options available for download. I'll put more links in the description. A screwdriver specific to the screws on your laptop, not just the ones on the back plate, but there's a chance you'll have to remove some screws under the hood as well. My G550, for instance, has T5 Torx screws on the back plate and Phillips head screws securing the hard drive. Lastly, you need an external hard drive to store your system image backup and any files too large to fit on your SSD. Once you've acquired all the aforementioned items, begin step one by creating a full system image backup of your hard drive. Because you know, this whole thing might not work. First, connect your external hard drive to your laptop, then in Windows 8, hit Window key and X, and select Control Panel from the pop-up menu. Under System and Security, select Save Backup Copies of your files with file history. On the left-hand side, click System Image Backup. Windows 7 users, go to System and Security and choose Backup and Restore. Then in the system image window, select your external hard drive as the save location for your backup. Click next and wait for the entire backup to finish. To avoid an epic failure, make sure your laptop is plugged into a power source during this process. For step two, you wanna free up space on your hard drive so that the clone actually fits on your SSD. Start by moving all of your movies, music, photos, and documents over to your external drive. You can do this by selecting the folders, then right clicking and dragging them to your external drive and selecting move here. Of course, once you're booting into Windows from your newly installed SSD, you can then move these files back to your laptop, space permitting. Once all the files have been moved, I'd suggest freeing up additional space by installing and running a free program like CCleaner, which deletes residual temp files living on your drive. Step 3. Connect and prepare the SSD. Once you've connected the drive using your adapter or enclosure, press the Windows key and S and search for Disk Management. Then click on Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Your SSD should appear in the Disk Management window. If it says it's not initialized, right-click, select Initialize Disk, leave the default settings, and hit OK. Then right-click the unallocated space of your SSD and select New Simple Volume. You can leave everything as is, but feel free to change the name to something more recognizable. Click Finish and let Windows create the volume. If your SSD pops up on your computer, it lets you know that the action has taken effect. Next, notice the size of your hard drive's primary partition where your operating system is installed. This is usually the C drive. If it's larger than the size of your SSD, right-click it and choose Shrink Volume. Leave the default numbers as is and click Shrink. Go ahead and shrink any other hard drive partitions you wish to clone as well. This should hopefully make your partition small enough to fit onto your SSD. At step 4, we're finally ready to clone your drive. Again, I used Acronis True Image HD, but since it won't let me record its movements, I'm showing you how to perform this step with this free program from EaseUS. Fortunately, all disk cloning software works more or less the same. Run your program and choose Clone, or a similar option, then select the source and destination drives, with the source being your hard drive and the destination being your SSD. Double check that your drives are set up correctly, then begin cloning. The process will vary in length depending on your hardware and partition size. Just make sure once again that your laptop is plugged into a power source. My clone took about half an hour to finish. After the cloning process is complete, shut down your computer and move on to the fifth and final step, replacing the hard drive with the SSD. Remove the backplate of your laptop with the screwdriver and remove any screws holding your hard drive in place. Then carefully unmount the hard drive by sliding it away from its connector. Give it a little wiggle if you have to. Proceed to mounting your SSD where the hard drive once was by pressing it all the way into the connector. 
replace the screws and backplate, making sure everything is tight and secure, and power up your laptop. If all went well, your computer will boot into Windows and run all of the programs that were on your hard drive a bajillion times faster. After walking through this five-step process, my G550 now runs like a whole new computer. Boot times are lightning fast, and getting into the BIOS is now more frustrating than ever. I couldn't be happier. I also have to give a shout out to the folks at LaptopMag.com for their thorough article that I referred to when making this tutorial. Guys, if you find this sort of content helpful, toss me a like on this video and let me know in the comments if you've done a drive swap like this in the past, or if you plan on doing one in the future. Finally, if you want to help make Awesome Sauce Network a better place, you can easily support the channel by bookmarking my Amazon affiliate link in the description and using it every time you buy stuff. You can also pick up a torso chassis like this one, or make a monthly contribution on Patreon to help the Awesome Sauce cause. I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, and I'll see you in the next one.